So I'm a mayor. I'm at the helm of a complicated city. Okay, I'm steering this thing. I've knocked on your door and I've said, Mornay, I've had a look at the preliminary research on your tool. Looks good. Right, use the tool on me. What are the types of things you would find? And being a nuts and bolts mechanistic leader, how would you surprise me? And how would I take it to work the next day as a leader? The first surprise is to become conscious that you have a philosophy. You cannot be philosophy free, it's impossible. And that the decisions that you've already made were based on a belief system. That's the first surprise that we found for many people. It's a sort of aha moment. And then we reveal what that belief system might be. What might be, to use your language, the nuts and bolts of a belief system. Let, let us show you then what we consider to be the nuts and bolts of a belief system. So we've designed, as I said, this around these 48 constructs, but those seven domains are essentially around people. So what do you believe about humans, about citizens? What do you fundamentally believe about them? The second is about agency. Do you believe as a mayor that you play an active role? Let's just imagine how mayors behave across so many developing economies. Or do you think that you are essentially the result of your environment? You'll be astonished to find the large number of leaders who do not believe in their own agency. The third dimension is knowledge process. Are you curious? How do you hunt for information? How do you epistemologically decide what information is valid, what is not? Would you, for example, tolerate this interview as part of your search for knowledge and thinking about cities in different ways? The next is enactment. So in other words, we all have to eventually, even after a philosophical discussion like this, we have to do something. What do you believe? How are things best done? Is it best done by others, by yourselves, in a sequential way, in a linear way, in a hyper-complex way, in a more circular, systemic way? How do you think things get done? Just incentivize people and off they go. Another dimension there is what we call the growth model. So how do you think about growth? Do you think there's just infinite growth, just keep going? Are you thinking more in terms of balance? How do you think things are advanced? What does advancement look like to you? And then there's a measure of reality. This has to do with how you conceive of reality, what you think reality is. Think, for example, about what the Roman Catholic Church thinks reality is versus what Bolsonaro thinks reality is or what the ANC thinks reality is or what Vladimir Putin thinks reality is or what Zelensky thinks reality is. You can see just from those few examples that no one is mind set free. And perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll conclude on these two ideas. You can think of mindset in, in at least two ways. The first is the idea that your mind has set, almost like a jelly, you know, or like cement. And if you're the mayor with a mind that has set, given the challenges you and I have now described on SDGs, you're not going to respond to an alternative future. And then we have some other work to do. And the second dimension is that you can think of mindset as ideas that operate in a set. In other words, a cluster, a connotation of ideas. Think of cliches or bias or prejudice as being classic examples of these. If you think of a certain group, there may be connotations that you may have. So what the mindset index does is it reveals these paradigms. In other words, these patterns of thought that occur again and again and again as an insight into both your own mindset and the mindset of the stakeholders around you. And then you can consider complementarity and you consider the implications of what this will mean for the kind of strategic decisions you make. So the outcome for me would perhaps be firstly, some data-based introspection and realizing mm. that I do have a mindset and what that mindset is. Mm. Secondly, it would reveal to me how well or not well that mindset fits the world I'm actually in. And thirdly, it would give me tools to make better decisions as a leader in the, in the world I'm actually in, as opposed to this industrial machine, which I thought I was in. That is exactly right. The realization that your decisions come from your mindset is for many people aha, an aha moment. Mm. And if you realize that for your stakeholders, whether they're citizens 
or on your management team, or they're investors in your business, or they're the talent around you, or they're simply your fellow humans on the planet. The realization that those citizens also are not mindset free. They have paradigms. They have ways of conceiving about of conceiving the world. And you can engage with those mindsets in an appreciative way. Well, that means your strategic decisions are no longer blind ego. They're appreciatively informed by the mindsets of yourself and of others.